Welcome to Success Superstars, episode number 90 with my special guest, Marion Mormon from the Austin, Texas market. Marion, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here today. So what's happening in Austin? It's still busy in Austin. So uh, I think uh, this is a great area. There's so much coming here. So I think it's going to be good for a while still. It's a, it's a great place to be in real estate. You know, I just read that the U.S. Army Space Command is moving there and Amazon's moving some things there and uh, quite mm-hmm. a few other uh, uh, announcements coming to Austin. Yeah, lots of businesses and some opening second offices and stuff, so it's good. Yeah. Now, ha- how long have you been uh, full-time into real estate? Um, five years. Five years. H- has it been the easiest five years of your life? No, <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but it's been um, challenging and fun and exciting. So. Yeah. Now, now, what's been the most challenging for you over the last five years? Uh, the most challenging probably, and I think it's especially true in the beginning, is trying to get the, the most bang for your buck as far as um, marketing, advertising, um, you know, bringing in the leads and um, just knowing, where to, knowing where to spend your money. Yeah. 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 Because as you know, there are so many people who are contacting us by email, by phone, but you know, it's hard, it's hard to wade through all that sometimes. Yeah, you're getting calls every day from somebody wanting to sell you something. In fact, yeah. and I were just out at the uh, NAR National Convention and we had a major booth. And, and the biggest problem we had is every vendor uh, on the planet wanted to stop by and, you know, pitch and sell us their thing. And right. we have to be really, really focused, um, you know, because everyone wants to, you know, uh, put put some product into our portfolio. Oh, it's just another just another dollar per month per agent, you know, and that you know, all that adds up, right? right. Um, yeah. so, so in the last five years, uh, you obviously started out at ground zero. Um, how have you developed your business? What what's your biggest lead source, and and how did you nurture that? Um, well, I, I definitely did buy into some of the advertising, mm-hmm. but. Um, and I will say that like realtor.com was a good way for me to start. And I still get good leads from that source. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an easy way to at least start getting some pretty quick leads. Right. But then the other thing is probably just, re- you know, referrals, which I'm working on developing more and more because those tend to be stronger leads they just take a little bit longer to build up. So I think you have to do a little bit of both, you know, short term and long term to really build a successful business. Right. Now, obviously, you said referrals are a big part of your business. How, how do you nurture and bring those about? Just try to stay in touch with people. It's, it's really the same. It's the same rule for the lead from the very beginning. But even after you've closed, you want to stay in touch with those people because they, if you've done a good job for them, which I believe I've done most of the time, they're going to become your cheerleaders. And as they know, people who are looking to buy or sell and you've stayed in touch with them, so your name is still on their mind, you're going to get referrals from that. Right. And, and like I said, th- those are the easy ones. Those are the most fun people to work with. I, I have one right now that was a referral from somebody who actually hasn't even bought from me yet, but <laughs> they were, they brought somebody else to me also. So oh, that's awesome. Now, yeah. do you have a specific routine, a specific uh, way that you approach each day and each week? Um, in general, you know, I like to start with just getting my day in order. Check, that means checking my email, 
check in the phone calls I have to make and check in my calendar. Um, after that, it just varies depending on what I have going on. But uh, the, the number one thing is that every day I have set calls for myself to make. Um, and that could be following up with leads that could be following up with past clients, but um, try very hard to make sure I get those done because that is what keeps your business alive and strong and builds your pipeline. Yeah. Now, if, if you were talking to someone that had been in the business for five years and they were struggling, what, mm -hmm. what, what advice would you give them? Yeah, I guess I'd first ask them what they've, what they've been doing and probably the, I definitely advise them to make sure that they are getting out and talking to friends, families, um, organizations, clubs, whatever they're um, involved in. Yeah. And um, then probably look at what I, what I find a lot of the uh, realtors who've been involved maybe five years or less in real estate, they do get caught up in a lot of, these um, advertising opportunities and all, all these other things that were offered. And they struggle often because they're investing their money here and there and, you know, everywhere and not getting any return from it. So I guess the other piece of advice I'd give them is just don't buy into everything. Um, they all sound really great. But my, my test is, do they have any skin in the game? And a lot of times, if you go into it looking like that, you'll find out they don't. <laughs> and um, I, I, I use that to judge these opportunities that come up. Um, right. Now, do you have a formula? You know, you're talking about talking to people and getting out. Do you have a formula like uh, 40 conversations to one sale? Uh, 40 conversations to four appointments. Do you kind of have a formula of the number of conversations you need to have to generate uh, one sale? I, I don't necessarily have a formula like that. Uh, my goal is to talk, to have at least 10 real estate conversations a day. Uh -huh. um, so I don't always make that, but um I, it sounds like a low number because a, a lot of, if you, if you go to some of these classes, they'll say, you know, 50 or 80 or a hundred conversations in a day. And that's just not realistic. But if you aim for 10 a day, you're going to be talking to a lot of people. Um, and I, you know, I find that ends up in at least, five or six strong um, potential transactions in a month. Now, yeah. how, do you, how do you create those conversations? Is that by Facebook, by text, by LinkedIn, by coffee? Uh, what, what you know, that's, a good, that's a good question because I think it has to be a variety. So it definitely some of those conversations come, out, come from leads that, that have come in. And as soon as they come in, uh, they are in my CRM and they are set up for follow-up conversations. And I, and I generally manually set phone calls rather than just letting drips run. Right. And I think that makes a difference. Um, also, I do try to – I usually have two or three lunches per week – so that can be with an organization, with an individual, um, what their, whatever they are, their chances to talk to at least one or more people one-on-one. Um, -on -one. Um, I also, another thing I've found is next, next door has been really good. That's, that's opened up a lot of conversations within my, immediate geographic area, which personally I think is the best place to, to focus first on. 
Right. Close, close to home. Yes. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up this episode, is there anything you'd like to share with the audience uh, about your success or th things that can make a difference uh, in the lives of the consumers uh, we serve? Yeah. I guess the, the last thing I would say is just be yourself. One thing that my clients tend to say about me or even clients who chose me over others is that I came across as very genuine and helpful. And um, I think that goes a long way. So even if you're using scripts to help you know what to say, and sometimes especially newer agents might need that, don't read someone else's script. Right. Internalize it so you know what to say, but then say it in your own way um, because that's when people are going to buy into you and trust you is if you seem like a real genuine person and not a, a bot, you know? <laughs> right. got to be genuine and authentic. Yeah. Um, so that's good advice. Now, before we wrap up, do you spend um, uh, more of your time attracting sellers or more of your time attracting buyers? Or a combination of the two? I mean, it's definitely a combination of the two. Buyers are easier. So I would, I would say I still get a lot more buyers than sellers. But I work, I work equally on both, and I'd probably get more buyers. Right. So, so in your view, buyers are easier. In my view, listings are easier. But, you know, everyone has their own perspective. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, I appreciate you so much coming on uh, the set to share your story and tell us a little bit about uh, your business. Uh, can't wait to see you in Austin soon. I'll, I'll be down there uh, later this week. Awesome. And, yeah. So uh, really uh, grateful for you and your time uh, sharing uh, with the audience today. And we'll see you soon on another episode of Success Superstars. Yeah, thank you.